Now, any of you steelhead fly tires out there, you're gonna love this pattern today. But even if you're not, hey, stick around. You can tie this a little bit smaller, just make it a standard trout streamer. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So the pattern I'm tying today, I got from John Shuey's Classic Steelhead Flies. I've been on a steelhead kick recently. Now, this one's by Randall Kaufman. And we've talked about Kaufman before with his brother Lance. He started a fly shop and a mail order catalog in Oregon back in the mid 1970s. Now Kaufman has four flies that are pretty popular and they've got kind of a train theme to them. So one of them we did, uh, the coal car, just a few weeks ago. He's got two others. One of them called a flat car, and then one called a signal light. But the one we're doing today, it was the first in this train series. It's just called a freight train. Now, it's a really cool looking pattern. It's a pretty typical steelhead fly. It's got a two-tone body, a silver rib, a really bright hackle, and then a hair wing. But what really makes this one stand out? Bright purple. It's got a purple hackle, a little bit of orange in the body. It's just a really cool looking pattern. Now, I've never tied the one we're about to tie, but it doesn't look that hard. No real advanced concepts. It's really cool with all these colors, so I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's a hook in the vise. This is a size four. So this is a pretty big salmon steelhead size fly. And if you can't necessarily tell how big a size four is, look at this size 12 ant we just tied. That's the hook for a size 12 ant. So this four, it's a pretty big hook. And as such, I'm stepping up my thread um, to a 140 denier. So if you'll notice these hooks, a lot of salmon fly and steelhead flies, they have that type of eye where it's just folded over and, and tapered down. So you do probably need to, you know, start your thread up here and, and build that little taper just to smooth that little section out right there. It could um, cause some, you know, issues with your thread later. So go ahead and lay a base of thread down uh, just around the bend of the hook. Now the Kaufman pattern does call for an optional silver tag, just flat silver tinsel if you want to do that. I'm not going to. When it says optional, I'm just going to leave it off. So I'm gonna go straight into the tail, which is purple hackle fibers. And it's a kind of long tail, I'd say a little bit longer than the, the bend of the hook, according to the picture I'm looking at right here. So let's catch this in right here. Just a couple wraps and check your position, make sure you're coming off the back. I think that looks pretty good right there. So a few more wraps right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bury this just uh, to try to minimize having a a big step down where I've got the tail tied in. So I got a little fluff right there I might have to trim, but I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. We'll go ahead with the second piece, which is going to be the oval silver tinsel. So probably as big a size as you got in this is gonna look good. And I'm going to catch it in on my side about where I think you know, there's a two-tone body. Back half is gonna be orange or red wool yarn, which is pretty thin, and then a fat black chenille above it. So I'm gonna catch it in where I think that uh, junction is going to be, or maybe just a little bit forward of it, because um, that will help me keep the back half of the body smoother. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. Let's get this caught in all the way back to where we're gonna start wrapping it. Okay, so you see that? It's caught in on my side. If I um, started the, the silver tinsel halfway, I'm gonna have a step down in between there and that would end up being right in the middle of my um, wool body, which I think would be noticeable. So I'm gonna start it right here. Now I'm gonna catch in some orange wool. Now I have a four strand wool yarn and I've split it into two strands each. So I just split it, you know, long ways. And then um, I think that's gonna give me the right thickness. Again, I've never tied this one, so not 100% sure, but if I tied the yarn in full diameter, I think it would be just a little bit too thick back here. So. We'll see how it goes with just two of the strands. Now we can take our thread back up here where we're going to catch off this, this yarn. 
and um, we'll wrap the rib later through the yarn and the front half black chenille. So go ahead and wrap this up. Try to keep it smooth. You might want to spin it if it's getting flat on you and you want it more corded. The one picture I've seen in Shuey's book here has it a little bit corded. So it's almost a, a segmented looking body. So we'll just try to keep that. Take it all the way up here and then tie it off. Okay, I think that is smooth enough. Two or three wraps right here. Got that yarn secured. Now let's tie in some chenille. So this is a medium black chenille. I'm not sure what it calls for. It didn't say the size. So I think medium is our best guess here. And if all you have is small, use a small. And if you have to um, do a couple of layers of it, I'm sure that would work just as well. So let's catch this off and take our thread back up here. You're gonna leave a little bit of room because we've got a hackle and a wing. So don't take your thread all the way up. Let's go, I think right there is gonna be fine. And let's just wrap this chenille. So the back, the body, I think it looks like it's about half and half. Half with that bright colored wool and then half with a, a chenille. So that's that was my goal right here to do a half and half. So far it looks kind of like a carrot nymph, doesn't it? It, it does. So let's go ahead and snip this off. Watch this chenille. It might make a little bit of fuzz. It does often. All right, and a few extra wraps just to make sure we're locked in right there. Get rid of that black chenille. Okay, now let's wrap this rib. And I'm gonna counter wrap it. I don't know that this is going to make a big difference, but fairly open picture I'm looking at here has about five wraps going up through it. Okay, I think we can catch this one off right here. Now this is a pretty thick oval tinsel rib, so it's going to take a few extra wraps just to keep it from spinning back on me. And of course this is pliable, you can't just spin it off, you're going to have to reach in here and cut it. Okay, so there's our body with the rib going through it. I think that's evenly spaced enough. Might want to brush that chenille out if it's matted down too much on you, but I think we're going to be fine. So the next component is going to be our hackle. And this one is the same hackle I used for the tail. Just a purple, strong saddle hackle. Now, it's not tied real thick, but it is pretty long. I mean, these fibers in, in Shuey's book, they're well past the, the point of the hook. Or, well, not well past it, but just about to it. So let's, let's catch this in. And then we're gonna probably get three or four wraps. Because it's not a real high quality hackle, it's a strong neck hackle. But several wraps to secure that. And that feather, I kind of tied it on upside down, but we're gonna be fine. Let's just try to preen these back as we wrap it. And don't worry if they're sticking all out, we will get them laying back in just a minute with our, with our thread. So I think that's gonna be fine right there. I should have left my thread back a couple of turns, that way I didn't have to waste any thread wraps catching this off. So I'm going to catch it off with two right here and then snip this excess and we'll see how much we have. Okay, it's definitely long. Is it going to be too much? Eh, I don't think so. So I'm going to pull all of these back and now just put a few wraps. I'm going to have to spend some getting back over this little bump with my rib. But take it a little bit back on itself right there. Now hopefully when I lift my fingers up it's still swept back. Okay, not entirely. Got a couple of them up here. I'm going to just pluck these. Will that work? Nope. 
I need to snip them. Okay. And we might have some cleanup in just a minute, but that's fine. So we do have a wing on this calf tail. I'm going to tie it in just right on top. And it's not a huge clump of calf tail, so get a medium sized piece of it. Okay, how about that right there? That might be just a little bit more than I want, so I'm going to grab the tips and then thin it out just a little right there. And there we go. To the bend of the hook, I would say not quite as far back as the tail. All right, let's go right there. And you could do the little trick where you put a wrap of thread just around the, the tail fibers. Um, I'm not going to. I think I, I can get away with this one and keeping it right on top just like it is right there. Okay, so that one is pretty much just on the top. And it's going to be a pretty big head when you've got a big hackle like this and a hair wing. So don't worry if your head is a little big. I'm going to get in here and just try to snip these off a little bit at a time. Make sure I get them all. Okay, I think we got them all right there. Now let's try to clean up this head. We can take it, ramp it back down all the way to the eye as long as we can still get our tippet in there. And this is a big salmon fly, so you're going to be putting some pretty thick tippet through there. But ramp this head back up and build it as big as you want. I'm going to put some head cement on it, make it nice and glossy and shiny. See a little bit of that purple coming through on that side, but I'm going to leave it because I don't want my head any bigger than this. Now we can get our whip finish in. Four or five turns and then your varnish or head cement or UV resin, get a nice glossy, shiny, hard head. And the freight train, it's done. Oh yeah, we might have a little bit of cleanup if you got some stray fibers on this purple hackle sticking all over the place, just go ahead and trim them. But it's a pretty cool looking fly. I think it's gotta be effective. I mean, it's certainly flashy, certainly gonna be an attention getter. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.